Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorial.com and in this video I'll show you how to use the brand new automation module in Reactor. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new Reactor content every week. So in this video I'll build a macro that allows you to send any event data to an automation lane in Ableton and record it there and then we can receive it back from Ableton to use in any way that you see fit. You can find the automation module at the very bottom of the auxiliary menu. And this allows you to send and receive automation data to and from a host program. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll use Ableton Live as a host program uh, just because it's the one I understand best and because it's so ubiquitous. So the automation module has three inputs that we have to set to use correctly. Um, the first is a touch input. Basically, you need to set this to one before sending an event to the automation and this just tells the host program that the um, automation control is in use. And next up we have the value input and this is just going to control the value of the automation control. And in order to send that value to the DAW we need to send an event to the trigger input of the automation as well. So I'm going to create a macro that receives an event and um, sends it to an automation field in the host program. So the first thing we need to do is to set the uh, touch input to equal one. So I'm going to use an order module to make sure that happens first. And we only want the touch input to be set to one for a short period of time and then we want to drop it back down to zero again. So a good way to do this easily is to use the hold module. And um, so when the trigger input receives an event, it's going to set the output to the value of the trigger. And it's going to hold it there for a length of milliseconds determined by the H input. So I'm going to hit the trigger with a value of 1. And we're going to set the hold time to equal the um, length in milliseconds between two events in an event stream. So we need to calculate the um, speed of events in this ensemble. And to do that we can use the system info module. The CR output is our control rate value. So by default I think it's 200 or 400 Hertz. Um, so if we take the reciprocal of the value, the frequency, and then multiply by a thousand, what we've just done is translate from hertz to um, time in milliseconds. So um, after we've done this, we can take the output of the multiplication and um, connect it directly to the H input of the hold module. And then all we need to do is to set the value of the automation module and then hit the trigger. Um, and you can use the same output of the order module to do both of those things. Since the value input is audio rate, uh, whenever the trigger happens, the, it will get sampled. Alright, so we can also turn the automation to be always active in the properties. And you'll see it's not working well with all the polyphonic modules I've created, so we can just set those all to be mono. I'm going to connect the output of the macro to a uh, numeric readout just so we can make sure that we're also receiving our automation values back from our host program. And um, as a sample event input, I'm just going to use an LFO with an amplitude and a frequency of one. I don't really want to do anything too uh, advanced here. You can supply any event input and it'll work mostly the same. Though event streams have a few uh, strange properties that you'll see when we um, 
are working in Ableton. And just because I don't want this to always be writing values, because the LFO is a constant stream of events, I'm just going to send it through a router. And the router will tell us when to record automation data whenever the button is on. And the final thing I want to do is to turn automation off for the on button. So what that is going to do is just stop um, us from recording automation data from that button. Um, if you don't do this, then you get some kind of strange effects. Um, so you can experiment by not doing it and see what happens. So I've loaded this up in Ableton. I'm going to create a new clip and open up the envelope view. And you can um, get a look at your automation data there. And there's a few things we need to turn on in Ableton before we can start uh, recording automation data. So the first is the automation arm, which is right here. And in order to record automation data, we want to use the little circle over to the right, right here. Um, but before we do that, we also want to make sure that the track that you want to record automation data for is um, also armed to record. So that's at the bottom down here. All right, so now automation is working, um, but I made a small mistake in the code. Um, you'll see that the uh, value reading out is never going below zero, even though our LFO is ranging from negative one to one. Um, and so the mistake I made is that I forgot to change the range of the automation module. You want the range of the module to be the same as the events that are going to be coming into it. So I just need to change it to have a minimum value of negative 1 and a maximum value of 1, and it should work fine. All right, so now we're recording the full range of our automation input. Um, but there's another interesting thing here. Um, this is a whole bar of data, and theoretically, Reactor should be sending out 400 events um, in every second. So there should be like 800 events coming into our automation here and if you look at all the uh, different value changes there's clearly a lot less than that um, and I don't really know exactly how to fix or change this um, I've noticed that part of the problem can be solved by changing the buffer size of your um, Ableton's connection to your sound card um, so Here's what it looks like with a smaller buffer. So we get a little more resolution, but certainly not as much as we should have. Um, and I don't know, it seems to uh, happen worse with event streams than with more static GUI elements like a knob or something. So I don't know exactly what causes that yet, but uh, hopefully we'll find a fix for that in the, in the near future. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Uh, if you did, please check out our website, and I'll be back next week with a new Reactor video.